Welcome. I'm Jody Zoranin. I'm the executive director of the Ohio to Erie Trail, and I have the pleasure of hosting tonight's webinar, the three rock star destinations on the Ohio to Erie Trail. Before we get started, I just want to let you know um, you have the ability to ask questions. So you can either uh, type something in the chat, which is um, you should be able to access that from your Zoom control. Um, or at the end, um, we will, you know, open up the, <laughs> the line, so to speak, and then you can ask your question then if it has not been answered during the presentation. But each of, so we have three, obviously three rock star destinations. So we have three presentations and let me admit a couple people here, sorry. There we go. Um, so our three presentations, we're going to, uh, let me just, uh, so our destination, uh, as visitors pass through diverse cities and villages on their Ohio to Erie Trail adventure, they yes. experience unique local flavors okay. and special surprises along the way. So we're going to talk to community experts from Cleveland, Westerville, and Loveland, and they're going to entice you with their amenities to get off your bike or step off the trail and explore their world. So uh, let me just, I'm going to stop sharing. Let me go ahead and uh, we're going to do the poll here and poll. Share result. So, out of our 28 responses, 19 are from Ohio. So, you're exploring the playground in your own backyard. And then uh, five are from neighboring states. And then one is from a state not listed east of the Mississippi. Three are from west of the Mississippi. And no one from Canada tonight, but um, we know we do have visitors from Canada. So give me a second. Let me pull up the presentation. And... I have to <laughs> okay, go back to Zoom. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sharing. Okay, now I just have to do this. <laughs> so we begin our journey at the shores of the Great Lake Erie and where we're gonna learn about what there is to see and do in Cleveland. Uh, Tim Fury began serving on the Ohio to Erie Trail Board in 2020, and he's from uh, Cuyahoga County, and the Towpath Trail is the main trail there, but several of the other Ohio, several other trails are part of the Ohio to Erie Trail uh, in, um, in Cuyahoga County. So let me turn it over to Tim Fury and let us know what special surprises we might find along the way. Okay. <clears throat> Can you hear me, Jody? Yes. Okay, great, awesome. Go ahead. All right, so hi, uh, my name's Tim Fury, and uh, yeah, I am on the board of the Ohio to Erie Trail, uh, and I've ridden multiple parts of the trail, north to south, south to north, many, many times. The majority of my time is spent on the northern half, 
Um, and so today I'm going to chat about the Northeast Ohio section, and my comments are going to kind of go from Cleveland down to Akron. That's the, the area I'm going to walk you through. And um, I guess I'll start with, especially up in, in the northern part of the of the trail, there's, it is a little confusing because boy, there are a lot of different names for the trail. Um, it's known as the Towpath Trail. It's known as the Cleveland Bicentennial Trail, the Centennial Lake Link Trail, the Wendy Park Trail, Whiskey Island Connector. There's a couple more that I'm sure I'm leaving off. Uh, but really, in northern Ohio, if people are talking about the trail, they're, they're, they generally collectively talk about it uh, as the Towpath Trail. And that, that name really kind of applies all the way from Cleveland all the way down to Akron and maybe even a little bit below that. So... Um, that's the name that you'll see frequently, and you'll see that on multiple signs throughout uh, your journey on the, the northern part of the Ohio to Erie Trail. Okay, let's go to the next slide. I am trying to advance it. Sorry. Here we go. Okay. There you go. Okay, <laughs> so now in the northeast Ohio section, especially in the greater Cleveland area, Boy, in the last five years, uh, we've really made some dramatic improvements to the trail. Uh, number one is Edgewater Beach Park. Um, that, that park is just fabulous. If you've never been to it, I greatly encourage you to visit it. You're gonna go there and you're gonna see that, you're gonna see the beach, you're gonna see the beautiful sights there and you're gonna think, wow, this is Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, it's going to blow your mind away. And it's, it's the Edgewater Beach Park is now part of the Cleveland Metropolitan Park system. Um, and then the trail really from Greater oh, Cleveland. Sorry. Up, uh, Hold on. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so the trail yeah, sorry. from Cleveland to Rockside Road in Independence, it's 100% paved. Um, and it's very well maintained. A lot of it's brand new. Um, it, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, trail. And then south of uh, Rockside Road and in Independence going toward Akron, um, it's really almost all the way to Akron. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a crushed limestone surface. It's a nice soft surface. Um, it used to run right along the Ohio Canal and uh, it's a wonderful surface as, as well. The trail is very safe. It does go through a lot of urban areas in both Akron and Cleveland, but uh, I'm telling you, the, the trail, it, it's used a lot and it's very safe. You will see runners, you'll see bikers, you'll see walkers, uh, you'll see young, young kids, you'll see families, you'll see elderly people. It, it's a very safe trail. And there's, and I'll talk about some of the interest, interesting stops and destinations along the way. Okay, so uh, primarily it's a flat route. It's uh, from all the way from Cleveland down to Akron. There's really not a significant uh, elevation gain or loss. And there's really only four hills of consequence heading south. Uh, one is in right in Cleveland, the Franklin Road Hill, and that's mile marker 111. And that's mile marker on the ride with GPS uh, route that's, that's on the Ohio to Erie Trail website. Uh, so that, that's, that's a pretty significant hill. And if you're heading south, that's downhill. Uh, I would tell you to use caution on that hill because it's uh, that is one section where it's a little rough, the road, and that's on road. Um, the second hill that's going uphill is at mile marker 110, and that's the Sokolowski's Tavern Hill. That's all on trail. It's all paved. It's very well uh, paved. 
but it is a pretty good hill. It's probably four or 5%. It's about a quarter mile, maybe a little bit longer in distance. And then a little further south from there, there's the I-490 Mounds Hill. These are some really interesting mounds that they artificially built along the side of the trail. They're very- oh, yeah. those are cool. And um, uh, once you cross under the 490 bridge, um, there's a pretty steady downhill. Uh, and then lastly, uh, going into Akron, there's a pretty good climb. Uh, it's about a, I don't know, a third of a mile, maybe a half a mile. Uh, it's about mile marker 72. That's, that's of all these climbs that I've got listed here, that's probably the hardest of them all. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Doing it. Hold on a second. There we okay. go. All right, um, before we get into all the sites and whatnot, I just want to um, give you all a word of caution that Google Maps and Apple Maps, they're great. Uh, very often they're very accurate, but there are a few major errors on both of those uh, because of some of the construction on the trail in the downtown flats area. Uh, and that's primarily due to the Center Street Lick Ridge, which is a big project that's going on, which has kind of disrupted the normal flow of the, the, the trail down in the flats area of Cleveland along the Cuyahoga River. So I definitely encourage you folks to use the Ride with GPS navigation link that's found on the OTET website. If you follow that, you download it on your cycling computer or you print up the cue sheet, um, you should have no problem in terms of navigating the area. It is a little squirrely, uh, but <laughs> if you use that ride with GPS link, that's you'll, you'll be fine. All right. I'm going to push you along, Tim, because okay. we, we got to. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. We're good. So now. Uh, the first major is uh, Edgewater Beach Park. Uh, there's a ton of things to see here. Uh, there's a great photo opportunities. There's the Cleveland Scripps sign. You'll see that. Uh, Edgewater Beach. There's they built this mammoth beach house there where you can get a meal, you can get a beer. There's lots of parking. It is safe. It's not overnight parking. Uh, if you have, and if you're going with young kids, there's a large playground there that the kids would just absolutely love. And then there's all sorts of multiple weekday and weekend events. Let's go to the next slide. And there's the Cleveland sign that overlooks downtown Cleveland. It's great for photo ops. You'll probably have to wait a few minutes to get your picture taken in front of that. Okay, let's go <laughs> to the next. And then there's Edgewater Beach. You're going to see this and you're going to think, wow, uh, you're not in, um, you're not in um, Ohio. In Ohio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Okay, next slide. And then uh, Wendy Park. This is actually the terminus or the be official beginning of the OTET trail. Let's go to the next slide. And uh, the Wendy Park is like a half a mile to a mile from Edgewater Beach. Um, there's Whiskey Island there. There's a Wendy Park Bridge. Again, there's lots of ample parking. I, actually, I would suggest you park here versus at uh, Edgewater Beach because Edgewater Beach does, especially during the summer months, gets pretty crowded and pretty crazy. Uh, there's a nice picnic area there. There's a great beach there. There's a kayak uh, launch. There's the Coast Guard station. And then you see a picture here of the Whiskey Island still an eatery. That's a great little restaurant. Oh. Lots of boaters. It's lots of fun. This is the Wendy Park Bridge right here. This is a brand new bridge that opened up not quite two years ago. It is really spectacular. This is taken at night. Let's go to the next slide. 
and, and mm, pretty. beautiful, beautiful metal sculpture that's done by two local uh, metalsmiths, Stephen Yusko and Stephen Manka. It's worth going to Wendy Park just to see that. Here's an up close of the, during the day of uh, one of the sculptures and some of the artwork. It's really cool. fabulous. Okay. And then there's right there is also the US Coast Guard Station. And you can actually ride right to the very mouth of the Cuyahoga River. It's, it's really pretty spectacular there. Um, and the, you, you get lucky, you might see a great big freighter coming in and you'll be amazed at how large these freighters are. <laughs> okay, next slide. Uh, so now destinations in and around Cleveland, there's lots of places to go to. Uh, right off of, uh, you'll, you'll be on West 25th Street for a short time period. There's the West Side Market. There's a couple breweries, Great Lakes Brewery, Market Garden Brewery. There's a great burrito place called Ohio City Burrito. You'll right, ride by. There's a very good uh, bike shop, Joy Machine uh, Bike Shop. And then there's also a fantastic ice cream shop. <clears throat> I would caution you, bring a bike. Uh, there are <laughs> bike racks and whatnot, but it's an urban area. Bring a bike lock. Okay, next slide. Uh, downtown Cleveland, if you, <clears throat> you're doing an overnight, uh, let's go to the next slide, please. There's lots of lots of things to do. There's a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That is worth the price of admission. That is really fabulous if you haven't seen it. Um, there's Progressive Field where the Guardians play. There's the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. There's always something going on there. The Cavaliers play there. <laughs> Public Square right downtown Cleveland. There is the Flats and Warehouse District with lots of restaurants and lots of bars and lots of activities. So it's, it's pretty cool. And then there's multiple, multiple hotels uh, that you could stay at, depending upon. And then there's all price ranges from Hampton Garden Inn to the Ritz-Carlton. And if you're staying overnight, there's good, safe, secure overnight parking. Okay, next slide. Then as we move south, uh, you'll go through the Tremont area, and there's another Cleveland script sign. And boy, there's some fabulous views of downtown Cleveland here. That's at about mile marker 110 and a half on Abbey Avenue. It's a great photo op. And then in the Tremont area, again, you can't go wrong. There are multiple restaurants and bars. Okay, next slide. <laughs> Okay, one area, one place right on the river that I would recommend you stop at if you're looking for a lunch place is it's called Merwin's Wharf and it's a really unique uh, restaurant. It's right on the Cuyahoga River uh, with wonderful views of the water and wildlife, very close access to downtown Cleveland. It's at mile marker 111. This, this picture is right off the ride with GPS uh, from the uh, OTET website. And there's your, the address of the place. You can't go wrong here. It's operated by the Cleveland Metro Parks. Okay, uh, heading south, continuing. Uh, you're gonna go, uh, eventually you're gonna hit the Steel Yard Commons. So if you need to stop and do any shopping, there's lots of shopping there. There's There are restaurants, there are more uh, more like a fast food type restaurants. Um, and then pretty soon you're going to get to the Harvard Road Trailhead. And this is in a very interesting area. So it's a beautiful park that they built right in the industrial valley of the, of the, uh, of the city. And it parallels the Cuyahoga River. Uh, it's reclaimed industrial land. If you get lucky, you'll see a bald eagle. And uh, you see them there frequently. Uh, a year ago in the winter time, I saw an eagle rising out of the river with a fish in its mouth. It was, or in its talons. It was. All right, was Tim, this is the one minute warning. So okay. let's. Uh, okay, next yeah, slide. Let us, okay. let us know what, we, what you really want to show us. Okay, so keep going. This is the industrial valley. Keep going. 
And so now here is Rockside Road. This is an important mile marker. Uh, there's the Cuyahoga Valley Scenic Railroad, a couple restaurants, keep going. Um, you'll go through, here's a there's eagle, eagle. <laughs> keep going. Yep. This blue heron, there's a beaver, keep going. Keep <laughs> going. Okay, Station okay. Road Bridge, lots of parking. I want you to get to Peninsula. That's in a couple. Okay, seconds. here okay. we go. Is that it? There we go. Okay, so there's a couple nice spots here. There's the Boston store. So you can get uh, drinks and food there and lots of different merchandise. And then a little bit further is Peninsula. Uh, and there's lots of shopping there. Um, and then keep going, just one more slide. And then you'll get to City of Akron at mile marker 73. You got to climb up a big hill. But there's lots of shopping in downtown uh, Akron, lots of uh, good restaurants. There's two good ones right there. And if you want to see a, a baseball game, go see the Akron Rubber Ducks. Here's uh, places to park. Most yeah. of these are daytime parking only, not overnight parking. That's okay, helpful. that's it. Yeah, I think that was it. You made it through on your uh, with your one minute warning. So thank you. Let's uh, give a round of applause to Tim. Thank you. That was a whirlwind. Uh, did any questions? Uh, well, we're going to do questions at the end. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, or people can put them in the chat and you can try to answer. But uh, right. let me stop sharing first. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. And next, next we travel to Central Ohio, and Laura Ball of the Westerville Parks and Recreation Department shares her insights as the Park and Facilities Development Administrator. She's been with Westerville for seven years and has building parks and trails for three decades. So she's a big a, a part of why we have this 326 mile trail available. So. Thank you, Laura. Let us know what we can experience in Westerville. Take right. it away. Thank you, Jody. Um, yes, so as Jody just said, I'm Laura, Laura Ball. I am with the Parks and Recreation Department. Um, all of my information also appears on the last slide if anyone is interested in that. Um, oops, sorry. There you go. Uh, hold on. I want it to advance a little easier. Um, so this yep. is a look at our local system um, here um, and how it sits in our regional system um, in the Columbus region. Westerville is sort of on the uh, northeast corner of, of central Ohio. Um, we are fortunate to uh, be the home to two national trails, um, three regional trails, and over 50 miles of city trail. Um, in addition to our park system, we also have um, two metro parks in the city, um, and we also have the Hoover, Hoover Reservoir, which supplies um, drinking water and recreation um, for uh, the greater Columbus area. Um, oh, actually, um, just before I get started, um, one thing to know, um, Westerville considers it itself a city and a park, but we also consider ourselves to be the home of prohibition um, <laughs> way, way back in the day, because again, this is flavor of the city. Um, the Anti-Saloon League was headquartered in Westerville, um, and they had their own printing company called the American I Issue Publishing Company, um, which published so much mail that Westerville was home to the um, a post office and, and was the smallest city in the U.S. to have a post office at that time, which also meant that the mail was transported by train. Um, which brought a train corridor, which the Ohio to Erie, um, this straight section, 
of the Ohio to Erie and Westerville is on the old Conrail uh, Railroad corridor. And uh, once upon a time, residents from Westerville could day trip to Cleveland for $2.75 round trip. So, um, so yes, yeah, so part of the Ohio to Erie in Westerville um, does sit on um, abandoned uh, rail corridor. Um, and if you want more information on the prohibition when you visit Westerville, um, our Westerville Library Branch has a fantastic prohibition museum. Um, and that is uh, adjacent to the trail and our Hamby Park, um, which is sort of our, our signature space for you to stop at. So the Anti-Saloon League Museum is a perfect place um, to, to stop and get more information about history. Um, so this is, um, forgive me, this is our uh, Westerville Parks and Recreation brag slide. Um, we are a, <laughs> um, a, a nationally accredited park system, one out of 191, and a five-time gold medal recipient. Um, and our programmers um, do a fantastic job with um, our recreational opportunities and classes uh, for residents and visitors. So if you're passing through in the summer months, please check out our free concerts and play offerings. Um, we have those both at our city plaza, which is in Uptown adjacent to the trail, as well as um, Allen Creek North Amphitheater. And they're both easily accessible from the trail. Um, we also in Westerville take sustainability um, very seriously. So we have um, wetlands um, throughout our system um, and a dedicated um, volunteers that help with those uh, wetlands. Um, up in this slide, this is one of our um, most popular um, uh, programs. It's called Frog Friday. It's at our Highlands uh, Aquatic Park. Um, this is a completely created wetland, restored wetland. Um, and again, it's at our um, Highland Park and Aquatic Center. So if you're in the area, this, this lower slide is our pool. Um, so on Friday nights, um, that's a, a very popular activity. Um, we, are, we love our community engagement. Um, so through the summer months, as I, I just mentioned, we have lunchtime concerts at our city hall in Uptown. Um, we have fourth Fridays, if you happen to be riding through on a Friday night, um, that is an evening community street festival series and it runs uh, May through September. Um, and again, our, our concerts and play at our Allen Creek North, North Amphitheater um, and in our Uptown area, uh, which, this is our city hall plaza. Um, our uptown has a Dora. Um, so just in case you've got some members of your party that want adult beverages and some that want ice cream, we got you covered. <laughs> um, and again, the the whole city in a park, um, as, as you're riding through, you'll, you'll probably interact on the trail with a lot of our residents. We have a lot of cyclists, a lot of walkers. Um, and the, our community center is not too far off the trail. Um, so if, if you um, need a break from the heat, um, please come check out our community center. Um, it, it is just a mile and a half north of the Schrock Road turn. Um, if you kept going straight on Allen Creek, you'd run right into our community center. Um, this is just sort of to give you an idea of, of what our parks look like. Um, this lower splash pad area, uh, that is in our Hamby Park, which is where our train depot shelter is. Um, we have um, a shelter, we've got a water bottle filler, we've got restrooms there for you. It's adjacent to the library and just off of our uptown. This is the American Issue sculpture paying tribute to our role in the prohibition. Um, and this is a look at, at people enjoying um, the lunchtime concerts. And then this is just sort of a little pocket park that we also have in Uptown. Um, we are a bronze level um, bicycle friendly community. Um, 
and uh, we try to be good hosts um, on as at the south end of the city. Um, there is the State Street, um, South State Street, which is um, home to a loft hotel. Um, and um, the shopping corridor has all of the fast food and Starbucks you could want. Um, if you are looking for charm, you're looking for our uptown area um, that has um, all, all sorts of restaurants, all the way from pub food up to fine dining, everything in between. That's where you're going to find your graders or your DQ um, and as, as well as adult beverages. Um, we do have a local bike shop um, in uptown as well. Um, again, another shot. Um, this was actually um, on the annual ride. Um, so that is a picture of our train depot. We have, oop, didn't mean that. Um, this is our bridge crossing um, County Line Road. Um, and we do have signage with the Ohio to Erie logo as well as the Great American logo, which they have the same alignment through the city. Um, I will tell you that if you're gonna get lost in Westerville, it's gonna be on State Street or Shrock Road. Those are your two areas to watch for your turns. Um, and we are indeed looking at uh, more signage for a better wayfinding experience through the city. Um, we are committed as a city to our mobility. Um, and um, in 2020, the uh, mobility chapter of the community plan um, was we took a deep dive into it and re-released it um, to set up a framework for um, moving forward with what Westerville's mobility with a specific lens of, of making the system accessible, safe, and convenient um, for all modes of transportations, um, particularly pedestrians and cyclists. Um, so just a, a couple of slides for this. Um, we're looking at uh, more pro uh, adding protected bike lanes, uh, bike intersection boxes, bike sharing, um, making the intersections more highly visible, uh, refuse islands, uh, pedestrian hybrid beacons, um, lighting signage, and intersection safety improvements. Um, so this is um, a sort of our existing conditions on this map, and this is where we hope to go in the, in the future. So um, things are always changing and improving in Westerville, and we do hope you visit us. And I am complete, so I can stop sharing. Good, good job with your time. <laughs> you, did, you did great. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Thank you, Laura. Now, as we continue on our way toward the beautiful Ohio River, we get to discover all there is to love in Loveland. So our tour guide is Dave Kennedy, and he has been the city manager of Loveland since 2014. Dave, are you able to share your screen? Yeah, yeah. Um, Great, welcome. So I guess this is probably just a slightly different uh, way of looking at it. Um, I'm sorry. Um, excuse me, I'm trying to do the get the thing started. Um, a uh, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. No, uh, share again. Yeah, I got it. I'm sorry. I needed to be able to get to that. I needed to get to there. So real quick, I just, when I was working on this and I wanted to touch on because I think it's sometimes a little bit forget forgotten that this is of course the section, one of the original rails to trails, which is, and I was looking at these pictures when I was working on this and I'm thinking how big of an impact the railway had to the city back then and how much the bike trail, which is largely the green, there's one existing rail, there were multiple, the green line that you see there is what is the now the Little Miami Scenic Byway. And I think about just how much of an impact 
that railroad had in this downtown district. And, and, and then on the same light, how much this bike trail means to our downtown district. I remember back in the old days when we used to talk about Sears being an anchor to a mall, how times have changed, but the bike trail truly is an anchor to our downtown district. So the Little Miami Scenic Bike Trail is 78 miles. The what, Little Miami, through its network, it's about 330 miles, roughly Springfield to Newtown. Um, Milford is included. That's one of our adjacent neighbors. Uh, basically, you enter the city of Loveland right out over the bridge, which soon will not exist because they're replacing it. And it's, mm -hmm. quite, uh, it's quite a lot of activity going on uh, with that. But um, it couldn't dissect the downtown district much more than it dissects ours. So I mean that in every way. We're also a Buckeye Trail town. We met all the criteria to be a Buckeye Trail town. That means we have uh, permanent camping uh, available uh, within a certain distance. So oh, we met all the requirements to be a Buckeye Trail town. When I did that, I thought I was doing going for the process to be a Buckeye Trail town, largely to say I was a Buckeye Trail town. I had no idea the amount of people uh, that would register with the city, which is a pretty simple process, uh, to, to, to camp there uh, on their way to Lord knows wherever. And um, I'm sort of glad I did it. I, I don't know that I really knew what to expect, but we are officially a Buckeye Trail town, and um, it's pretty exciting. So... I know this is old, but it is relevant strictly in the sense that the Fosters the Loveland to this day is still the most uh, utilized portion of the Little Miami bike trail. This organization, this is from the Friends of Little Miami State Park. I've been in um, local government for 38 years and I've never ever uh, worked with a better organization of volunteers than the Friends of Little Miami State Park. People think that bike trail I don't mean this in a negative way. We do pretty much nothing. Tree falls, they <laughs> take care of it. They do everything. We help police it. We certainly have our roles in it, but it is amazing what the friends of the Little Miami State Park do uh, on this trail. They are one dedicated little group. So uh, just a little bit of kudos. But if you would forecast this number forward, everyone's gone up some, but obviously the city's location in Loveland is still the key. So like, how does, how does it connect when you come into our town? I can't emphasize enough how our businesses build around the bike trail. We were lucky that a couple of years ago, uh, ODNR widened the bike trail through the city to 10 feet. So it is, this scene here is very, very common. Everything you see along the bike trail is open. Every business factors in how they can play a, their business can play a role in the bike trail. For example, conversely, so how are they being impacted by the bridge being closed during the summer months? And um, that's no jab at them. Uh, these are not made up. This is a typical day. We even obviously have a bike rental place in the city. Conversely enough, there are pros and cons to everything near the bike trail. This crossing on West Loveland is so. Um, is can result in such backup and traffic we've actually been awarded a grant to signalize that intersection signalize it as in both for the vehicular traffic and the bike and pedestrian traffic they'll have independent signals to try to create a flow the the traffic signals will actually know but when you look at these businesses and what we do every business knows and the city works with them these paths uh, we're constantly upgrading our bike our bike racks throughout the throughout along the bike uh, throughout the bike trail. Over here in the far right hand corner, you can see. I don't know. I think I can put out a hundred Adirondack chairs, and and someone will use them. That is sort of a little bit of the theme of of the city, and uh, it is a big popular part. Um, a lot of restaurants and a lot of retail. That's our two primary uses in the downtown district. Um, it is also a key to future developments. If, if it is the anchor to our downtown, we are finding that more and more people want to move to our downtown district. So um, we have, we call these are the Broadway Brownstones. The bike trail is within 30 feet of that white car you see. Um, we're getting more and more of these, both in our downtown district 
um, very beautiful high end, also to the point where we um, worked through a process to develop design guidelines so we could help control the appearance of all of what is happening. Uh, brand new restaurants uh, that will be convert completely and totally built around the bike trail. New homes, we have a ring around the downtown district where properties that you would never think would have ever been of much use are now going in to so they can get it within walking distance to the city and of course with their bikes. And that's what we're seeing more and more. Downtown Love and Station project is uh, completely adjacent to our, um, completely and totally adjacent to the bike trail. It's a mixed use of, uh, of restaurants and high, very nice apartments. Each apartment has their own bike storage area with garages. It's a complete amenity. So what we're seeing, and I've only been here for, I've been here for 2014. I spent 25 years in my prior community. And um, what we're seeing now is a very college feel, a college campus sort of feel. More and more people living down that are walking and they ultimately, so our bike trail is not just a bike trail, it's our main pedestrian way for our residents and for everyone. We have a farmer's market. Everyone who comes into town knows just park near the bike trail and walk along the bike trail. On Wednesdays, you will see your little plastic bags as people go from the farmer's market. And that is what we're seeing as, while it certainly brings the large people into our downtown district, it is our main mode of transportation for getting around the downtown district is hopping on the bike trail. So what do we do? Well, we embrace it in every way, shape or form. We are a door community. Um, we talked about that before, we are designated outdoor freshman area. That includes completely and totally the boundaries of the uh, bike trail. Um, and we um, have areas throughout the downtown district. This DORA played a key role during the pandemic because it allowed, we countered this with outdoor seating throughout the, the district to encourage more and more people to utilize our businesses and then they can get out of the restaurant and capitalize on that. We're constantly looking for access points. How do we get to the trail? This is a, a large parking area, a large uh, area along Railroad Avenue. Got approval from ODNR, ran some steps in there. We just recently landscaped this. We know it's our front door and we constantly try to improve it. These are the good, these are at around its chairs around our town clock. Um, these will, once the sun comes out, these will be full nonstop until the fall. Uh, it is such a meeting place. The bike trail literally crosses right through this area. We just recently added this AED. Um, every little point, I know this is minor, but we are constantly looking. This is an, uh, another uh, parking area, a public parking area, where I realized by removing some old dirty dead bushes that were dead anyways, if people were pumping through there, we could create better access to some of our retail shops and right to the bike trail, which is right there. Minor cost, a little bit of, little bit of cost for paint. Um, we, at, at, I don't know if you've ever been to Loveland, but we do Valentine's to a different level down here. To say the least, we have a Miss Valentine's lady that's been going on since the 70s. This entire area approved by ODNR is a tribute to our Miss Valentine's program. And it is many, many people started. It's a garden with a, with a whole history of the program, uh, a plaque and, and an etching of every single one of the Valentine's ladies. And they are basically rock stars in this city and they are Miss Valentine's for a year. Uh, Nisbet Park, I'm sorry, let me go back one. Nisbet Park is directly adjacent. It is our main park directly adjacent to Little Miami City bike trail. Um, we, that park is going through a massive transformation. We just completed a gazebo that is directly connected to the bike trail. We're, I'm working towards a bit of an Austin theme. We're trying to get a little bit more of a music city area. While we have a bigger amphitheater in that far back corner, this will be for a lot of smaller bands. I would anticipate weddings, but trying to get a little bit more of a music vibe. The bike trail is immediately to the right here. And uh, this gazebo, the landscaping just went in yesterday. So we are constantly improving. We are trying to constantly remind ourselves this is our front door. So what comes with it? <laughs> We need parking. City recently purchased some recently, you know, which is recently. City purchased some area for parking where we'll be building a new parking garage. We also bought some property uh, for access. Who will be the largest user of this? 
Little Miami Scenic Bike Trail. There's, I'm sorry, Little Scenic Bike Trail. There's Nisbet Park, as you can see, as it dissects through the city. We're working hard to get this project. This is my sort of, I get to retire when it's done project. And um, hopefully we'll be moving forward on this project. This will also create a new access point. This will make life very easy for those that want to come in and um, utilize the bike trail. This is the latest rendering. This is what you would see from the bike trail. So this is a major, major project. And we try to sell it when we look for funding that it supports the Little Miami State Bike Trail, which is, I believe, the fourth largest paved trail in the United States. So those are all sort of the amenities. I don't really, I post this talk about the goods and the bads sometimes. There really isn't any bads. There's just adjustments that we need to make. We're constant, how can we improve it? How can we make that world better for those people? It's because it's both ways. It's for the residents that we have from our, our own residents and the neighboring community residents, but of course the many visitors who come into the city and it's 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 sort of their first look at the town. And we try very hard to put our best foot forward and we're investing heavily into that area. If uh, we, uh, we are also wrapping up a major planning phase, everything we do in our planning, we did a downtown strategic plan, centers around the access points you see there. We just finished that landscaping this work. We believe in finishing our plan. We just did a complete Nisbet Park master plan. The gazebo and the walking trails and the future seating areas are all in the process. We also completed a streetscape plan, which you can see everything includes how do we deal with, how do we address, how do we complement the bike trail. But it's, I did this, these renderings just to show you that everything that we do in our downtown district ultimately centers around how the bike trail can be approved and in and, and what manners and it is just, and we do this not, we do this not from an economic standpoint, we do this from a standpoint of recreation, a standpoint of offering something for everyone. And uh, from the youth through the Dora, through uh, all the different elements. And, and, and that's a big part of it. I, I will probably be gone by the time Nisbet Park is complete, but I, I would anticipate Nisbet Park will be one of the signature parks along the entire bike trail when it's completed and it's exciting to see the original part of it and to be a part of some of the funding. Um, if you ever have any questions, you can always email me anytime. E. Kennedy. We have a, a website dedicated to just uh, sort of the non-governmental side of the city. It's called Love and Life Loveland. I did these screenshots because of course there's the bike trail. This is a good pictorial actually down here in the lower right of sort of how the trail meanders through our downtown district. So I wanted to go fast. I hope I didn't go too, too long, but uh, that's sort of the bike trail in Loveland, how it impacts our businesses, how it impacts our development, and how we as a city are constantly thinking about how to better it, utilize it, protect it. Protecting it is important too. So that's all I had. Thank you. I feel like I went on a virtual trip all over Ohio today. Thank you to our speakers, Dave, Laura, and Tim. Uh, we do have um, 10 minutes left. So if people want to, we need to find an orderly way to do this. But if you want to ask a question, maybe say first which speaker or which um, city or village it's uh, geared toward. Uh, and then I also want our board members to say hello at some point. So we have Tom Bills, Matt Simpson, Bob Needenthal, and I apologize if, well, and of course, Tim Fury uh, already. So go ahead with the first question. Unmute yourself, of mm -hmm. course, first. <laughs> Tom, did you want to say hello? <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> Put you on the spot. Uh, yeah. Thanks for attending. Uh, I'm Tom Bilsey, and I am president of the Howard Erie Trail. And 
happy that our presenters joined us today uh, for a pretty good webinar. Hey, David, this is Matt Simpson. I'm also on the board. Um, I uh, I did the Hardy Erie Trail back in 2020, started in Cincinnati, head towards Cleveland over four days. I have to tell you, um, we were 25 miles into the entire trip and we stopped in Loveland for lunch and I did not want to leave. It was such a good time, um, such a neat community. Um, so I just want to give you lots of kudos for what you've done. Uh, my question is, um, you know, when it was when the rail was converting to a trail, um, what how long did it take for the businesses to really embrace um, the, the trail as the front door to your community versus kind of that backside, which is probably how it was used and when it was a, a rail line. So, so from 2014, I've seen a lot of change over one of the biggest businesses, which was Ramsey, which I tried to cheat it because it was really two of those pictures. I took them from different angles, uh, full transparency there, but um, they utilized on sport they utilized the bad thing, which is, I don't know if many of you recall, but in 2017, uh, we lost a half of the city block through a massive fire. Um, extremely sad. They utilized their renovation of that building to open up that one sideway right by Mr. Red, where our Mr. Red statue is. And it just seems like everyone sort of followed suit. The city works with ODNR to get right away. We started putting in those pads. We started putting in those uh, uh, the bike racks and Wicked Pickle and all the other ones sort of started saying, wait a second, this is a mode of transportation that we should be inviting. I really didn't have anything to do with it, but the, it was a, one of the positives to what was a terrible, terrible day in the city's history, which was Memorial Day of 2017. So I have seen it really blossom over the last three, four years. And when ODNR came through and widened the bike trail by 10 feet, that really brought that even closer to every one of those buildings. Restaurants is what I meant to say. That's a, it's impressive then what's been done in a relatively short time then, that's for sure. Thank you. I, I need to retire, but I don't want to leave. That's the problem. So it's such a <laughs> wonderful place, and City Hall is right smack in the middle of it all. So thanks again. I do want to give Bob Needenthal a chance to, to say hello. I see he's got a cooler there. <laughs> he must be getting us all some beverages. <laughs> uh, take yourself off mute and say hi. Good evening. This is Bob Needenthal. Uh, Again, I've been on the board, I can't remember how long, probably about seven, eight years. But uh, I do have the uh, pleasure of keeping the interactive map up to date. So, uh, and it is a pleasure. I, to me, this is part of why I retired is to find something useful to do. And I found that the Ohio Dairy Trail has turned out to be somewhat of a passion that I learned from Tom Moffat when he was president. So. Uh, I see this as uh, nothing more than pure pleasure to, to work on this trail, to, to go out and ride the trail. Uh, my home area is, is the Loveland area, so I've probably been in that area the most. But, uh, but if there's a poster child for a trail town, it's certainly the Loveland area. So always enjoy going to the works or one of the restaurants there and having a great time. Well, Bob, somebody just put in the chat box that the interactive map is wonderful. So well, virtual applause. Well, Thank you. So <laughs> and, and my, uh, my request is always, if you see something that's not accurate, please post it out on the Ohio Dairy Trail enthusiast page or to the Ohio Dairy Trail web page or Facebook page. The, the whole ch challenge there is to keep it current. And the hardest part is keeping it current with all the trail maintenance that goes on. When you have 326 <laughs> miles of, of trail, the only way that stays usable is through a lot of construction and maintenance. So when you go past those well, folks, don't, don't be upset about the trail being closed. Thank them for keeping the trail <laughs> as good as it is. 
let let me dovetail on that. Um, some people may be watching this webinar months from now. So we always post the current trail status or closures on ohio2eerietrail.org slash alerts. And there are several to be aware of this spring. Um, Dave let us know before the call that a uh, information is going to be coming about the Loveland Bridge and how that will be uh, marked, but it, it, it's not going to be an announcement on this webinar. So just stay tuned to social media channels and we'll get that information out to you as soon as possible. Um, what other questions for the presenters today? Who would like to go? Is anyone asking questions? Do we have I had some in the chat. Oh, go ahead. I did see a couple in the, the chat that looked about um, our signage. So in, in central Ohio, um, we have a sort of a um, network of trail builders um, called the Central Ohio Greenways, a COG board. Um, and years and years ago, we adopted a standard sign uh, for our regional trails and asked that all of the members um, ad adhere to that. So that is why we don't have the number one Ohio to Erie. Um, we do have the logo on our sign, but the sign itself is, is branded to the region. Um, and right now, um, COG is looking and they're actually doing a pilot on the Ohio to Erie to look at signage um, and, and possibly updating our sign package standards. So I'm um, sort of holding for when those new standards are released before I add new signs to ours, um, just to be a good steward of public funds, um, waiting for the new, new sign package so I'm completely compliant when I do um, update um, our signage. So those should answer those two questions, hopefully. Jody, um, there was a question about the Center Street lift bridge in Cleveland I saw in the chat. Go ahead. And um, when when is the completion date? And boy, that's it's kind of a moving target. It, I don't think it's going to be this year. I think it's well into 24. Um, this, this, it's a pretty, the engineering behind it, we could have a seminar for two weeks on it, but <laughs> uh, my suggestion to folks is to use the interactive maps that uh, are on the website or uh, the GPS, the ride with GPS uh, uh, link that's on the OTET website. Uh, and then if you take that ride with GPS and download it into your bike computer um, and follow the prompts, you'll be fine. Or if you print up a, uh, a cue sheet from ride with GPS, the, that is about as up to date as you can get. Um, and again, my earlier comment about Google Maps and Apple Maps there because of some of the construction and whatnot in the downtown Cleveland area right near the finish of the the route it, those are not accurate and people will get very frustrated if they're trying to follow that well we're we're right at eight o'clock. So I really appreciate everybody joining us this evening. We had a three lively presentations and I know I learned some uh, several things tonight. Um, we will be posting this on our YouTube site. So these webinars are able to be viewed later. And then if presenters uh, would like their slides to be shared. I will also post those, those in our news section um, in a 
on a post that's dedicated to this March webinar. Next, our next webinar will be April, I think it's the 19th, I need to look, but it's just going to be an open house, ask us anything. So that could be one if you want to talk about uh, current detours at the time that may be in effect this spring. Uh, we encourage you to come to that webinar and, and we'll uh, try to answer anything with the help of several of our experts. Uh, I really want to thank everybody for being here. And as always, you can find more information about us at ohio2eerietrail.org. And we hope that you will come visit uh, for a few hours or many days, but just get out and enjoy the Ohio to Erie Trail. Thank you. Have a good night.